in the news tonight, climate change conference on reducing carbon emissions underway in Paris. Police train private security organizations. Director General of GBC, Major Albert Donchebe, elected President of African Union of Broadcasters, AUB. And Mr. Kwesi Jan Appington is new chairman of the National Media Commission. A very good evening to you. Many thanks for joining us here on GBC 24. We're also live on GTV. This is News R. I'm here with my colleague, Selike Makolache. And he is Abdul Hai Mumin. We're also here with Clement San, who will be giving us the news language, uh, the translation of the news in the sign language. And we also have Conrad in the studio, Abdul. And uh, well, you all know that the climate change conference is ongoing in France. Conrad Kakrava is right here and he will be starting the news with us tonight and he'll be telling us what has been happening tonight as uh, the conference continues in uh, France. Conrad Kakrava, thank you very much for joining us here on the news. News R it is. Thank you, Abdul and Salikem. So it's been a day of speeches at the UN Climate Conference in Paris. Negotiators from 195 countries will, in the next two weeks, try to reach a deal aimed at reducing global carbon emissions and limiting global warming to two degrees Celsius. And leaders from over 150 nations are addressing the meeting known as COP21. President Barack Obama urged the negotiators to deliver a meaningful deal because the next generation is watching. And the last major meeting in 2009 ended in failure. But French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabio, who is chairing the meeting, said a deal was within reach. And most of the discussions are also expected to center on an agreement to limit global warming to two degrees Celsius. Assessments of the more than 180 national plans that have been submitted by countries also suggest that if they were implemented, the world would see a rise of nearer to three degrees Celsius. Peruvian Environment Minister Manuel Pulga Vidal declared this year's meeting open on Monday and strong action on carbon emissions is essential for multiple reasons, according to Mr. Vidal, who hosted last year's UN Climate Conference in Lima. Mr. Vidal said a deal would show the world that countries can work together to fight global warming as well as terrorism. The change in the weather pattern when that change lasts over an extended period of time, that is about decades to millions of years. Climate change is caused by variations in solar radiation received by the Earth, volcanic eruptions among other climatic conditions. Certain human activities have been identified as significant causes of recent climate change, often referred to as global warming. Climate change is the greatest humanitarian crisis of our time, responsible for rising seas, raging storms, searing heat, ferocious fires, severe drought and punishing floods. It threatens our health, our communities, economy and the national security. Science has made enormous inroads in understanding climate change and its causes and it's beginning to help develop a strong understanding of current and potential impacts that will affect people today and in coming decades. This understanding is crucial because it allows decision makers to place climate change in the context of other large development challenges facing the nation and the world. There are still some uncertainties and there always will be in understanding a complex system like the Earth's climate. Nevertheless, there is a strong, credible body of evidence based on multiple lines of research documenting that the climate is indeed changing and that these changes are in large part caused by human activities such as burning of fossil fuels, waste disposal and carbon emissions. Worldwide, nations have begun taking steps to combat this growing threat, working toward an international agreement in which every country on earth plays its part. Many of the world's largest polluters have stepped up with significant commitments amplified by efforts from cities, businesses, sports leagues, churches and many other individuals and groups that have responded to the urgent need for climate action. 
And so let's now speak to Professor Chris Gordon. He's the director of the Institute of Environmental Studies of the University of Ghana. Good evening, Professor. Yeah, good evening to you. Right. Now, so what do you make of the conference taking place in Paris? Sorry, you have to repeat that. Well, I was asking, uh, what do you hope that the leaders who have gathered in Paris will be achieving? Well, the, the conference has a very clear target. That target is for us to have an agreement on the two degree uh, long term target in rising temperature globally. And to achieve that, uh, countries need to agree on a common protocol. As you mentioned, the last time we had something like this was in Copenhagen, it was not agreed upon. At this time, the French government of this conference seemed very glad that uh, the very um, expectant that the uh, agreement would be reached. But I'd like to point out that two degree target is already under attack because we know that the two degree target will not be sufficient for a lot of the people in uh, countries such as Bangladesh, people along coastal areas in the developed countries. And we're already getting uh, 1.5 degree rise. So there's already some issues about the direction we are going to go vis-a-vis -vis the, the Paris Accord. We are hoping now that uh, countries like uh, China and the US are on board, they were missing the previous accords, that there will be some agreement. And the difference between Paris and the other accord is the fact that in the write-up of the treaty, there is the option for a review of the commission every five years or so. Mm -hmm. So we are using a combination of a top-down approach and a bottom-up that is using the internationally legally binding aspect and we are having the nationally non-legal binding aspect. And these are known as the INDCs. And Ghana has already submitted as far back as in September to the Ministry of Environment, uh, uh, Science, Technology and Innovation, Ghana's INDCs. We are, we are on part of the Africa group, and we are hoping that we will have an agreement that the whole world can. Uh, move towards. Yes, Professor, um, Africa itself has its own challenges, especially with energy sources. We've been depending so much on hydro sources, but we've seen that these are not sustainable. What do you hope will be the focus for Africa? Well, um, I, I was uh, privileged to be part of the African Group of Negotiators Expert Support Panel. So we crafted in Nairobi earlier this year the African position on issues like uh, gender, land use, agriculture, early warning systems. But I have to state for record that the problems that we are facing with rising temperatures climate change issues is as a result of other countries, countries in the developed world, who have developed at the expense of our environment. But it's we in Africa who are going to bear the brunt of the problems that climate is going to bring to us. So in terms of the development agenda, we are very clear in the National Climate Change Policy of Ghana that we are not going to impair our development pathway because of reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. We are right. going to pursue a climate 
compact good growth, and, and that is what Africa as a whole wants to pursue. All right. I guess that will be all for now. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Chris Gordon. He is the director of the Institute of Environmental Studies of the University of Ghana, Legon. And earlier, we had been speaking to a climatologist as well at the Department of Geography of the same University of Ghana, Dr. Kwejo Owusu. He says that Africa needs about $5 billion a year for adaptation and mitigation measures to reduce the impact of climate change. He was, however, skeptical about whether the current COP21 meeting in Paris would come out with any concrete solutions to the global problem. Scientists are calling for urgent steps to be taken to halt greenhouse gas emissions and Dr. Wusu says investing in education is one of the surest ways to combat the rapid rise in temperatures across the world. Of climate change is evident. Some of the most dangerous consequences are higher temperatures, changing landscapes, rising sea levels, increased risk of drought, fire and floods. Efforts to find solutions to global warming in the past have been difficult. For the past two weeks, world leaders at the Paris Climate Change Conference, otherwise known as COP21, hope to achieve a universal agreement on climate change. Many, however, believe that there is no single solution to global warming. A climatologist at the Department of Geography at the University of Ghana, Legon, Dr. Kujo is skeptical about whether the over 100 leaders can come out with a concrete solution. For scientists, the most two important strategies are mitigation and adaptation. Thus, Dr. Kujo says, can be through education. He believes that although scientists can make long-term projections of climate change, they cannot say exactly when a disaster will hit and how severe it will be. The truth is that the way we live our life these days, there isn't much we can do in the media to stop putting the carbon into the atmosphere at all because we run our cars, we generate energy and so on and so forth. So a lot of what this talks is about is to reduce the rate at which we are putting these gases into the atmosphere. People think that uh, we've done enough sensitization, but even if you talk to professionals and uh, 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 people who, who, who are academics, the level of understanding and the little things that could be done, it's, it's not, it doesn't dawn on everybody. So I think that uh, we haven't exhausted the opportunity to do further education so that uh, people will feel confident I can explain to their friends, in the climatic jargon, things have to be done or we have to put measures in place to prevent temperatures from going above two degrees. But according to major experts, all the commitments that have been pledged towards the Paris meeting, if it is even accepted and carried out, will only reduce uh, temperatures or they reduce the rate of increase to about three degrees centigrade, which is still not good for our F. On funding, he suggested that Africa may need as much as $5 billion a year to deal with the issues. And going into the future, we will need about $30 billion a year to really be ready to do both adaptation and also mitigation. So uh, the cost imperatives are, are great. It's very expensive. We need to do little things like policy, like education, because in other countries, uh, the building materials are taxed so that in my class, I tell students, the government should make it such that if you want to build with glass, because we are going to demand more electricity, it should be punitive. There should be more taxes put on this to create awareness so that we we'll go back to using louvers for building, because louvers will help a little bit with the air coming into the house. We all know that, but we also believe that uh, or have accepted that building with sliding windows is more beautiful, it's more modern. But if we are educated, we will understand why we don't need to put glass everywhere on the house. But for the scientists, all is not lost. They hope that the ongoing conference will come out with a workable plan for the world to fight global warming. 
And so that's our segment on the climate change conference going on in Paris. We'll keep on monitoring the conference and then we'll bring you up to speed with what is happening there. Over to you, Selikem and Abdul. And thank you very much, Conrad, for updating us on what's happening in France with regards to the climate change conference. And back here in the country, we, the Ghana Police Service is training all private security organizations across the country on how to operate within the ambit of the law. The police says all private security organizations must be knowledgeable about the regulations that govern their work. In uh, Accra on Monday, the Minister for Interior, Mr. Marco Yongo, said for next year's election, the national security apparatus and some private agencies will work together to ensure a peaceful, free, fair and transparent elections. Mr. Oyongo has therefore asked the IGP to immediately review all regulations governing the operations of private security organizations. And in what's happening on the media landscape, Mr. Kwesi Jana Penting is the new chairman of the National Media Commission mandated to register, regulate and monitor the media in the country. The new 18-member board will be in place for the next three years. Its immediate tax being ensuring equal opportunity and fair access to all political parties in the coverage of the upcoming general elections by the state-owned media. The newly constituted 18-member NMC was sworn in by Justice of the Supreme Court, His Lordship Justice Joseph Akamba. As he handed over, the outgoing chairman of the National Media Commission, Mr. Cabral Blay Amihe, mentioned some of his accomplishments during his term in office, as well as other projects already on the table. The NMC will relocate and operate for me relatively more modern office complex at sweet back rules cantonments. We hope posterity will deem this as one of the legacies of the sixth and seventh commission. But the real credit goes to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, who has delivered on a promise he made to the NMC during one of our meetings to ensure that the NMC operated from a suitable office space. In an interview, the new NMC boss, Mr. Kwesi Jana Penting, spoke about the importance of communication and how every opportunity in this regard should be properly used. The main point of being on this commission, not just of being as chair chairman, is to make sure that the opportunities that we have now to communicate are put to the best use because we were not always like this. The 18-member board has its job cut out as the nation turns the corner to the election year. Among its duties, it must ensure that all state-owned media give all political parties equal opportunity and fair access in the coverage of the general elections. And uh, we do have more news coming up. Don't go away. We're going for a short break. We'll be right back. When we return, Esther Edu will join us with what's happening in the world of business. Good evening. You welcome to the world of business. My name is Esther Edu. The arrival of the car park ship has resurrected the debate for the payment of realistic electricity tariff in the country. The Minister for Power, Dr. Kwabna Donko, at the inauguration of the power ship indicated that Ghanaians must be ready to pay more for power. We have on the line the Public Affairs Director of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, Nanaya Jantwa, to speak to us on how far the Commission has gone with this nationwide consultation for the new tariff regime in the utilities sector. Good evening, Madam. Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How far have you gone so far with the nationwide consultation on utility tariff review? We, so far, we finished our consultation on the tariff. Um, we've done all the stakeholder consultations and now what we are doing is we are actually looking at the figures that have been presented to the commission by the secretariat of the PRC and that is where we are at the moment. 
Okay, so do you have a specific But I want to correct something that you said. Okay. The PRC is an independent commission. Mm -hmm. And it's the only the PRC that decides the time to go up or not. Okay. And we want to make that very clear. All right. Yes. Well noted, madam. So when should Ghanaians expect the new tariffs? We can't tell because the commission is now deliberating on the figures that have come out. Uh, what we are seeing is uh, about 100%, but uh, looking at the circumstances, the, the commission is now uh, trying to see how they will bring out the tariff that will be okay for the consumer and also for the utility service provider, balancing the interest of the two. Within the tariff for a model, there is something called um, a discretionary power pass utility, a decision variable by the commission, a decision variable. So that decision variable is what is going to determine which way the tariff will go. But as it stands, the commission has done their work, the spirit has done their work, and they are seeing it by 100% and not goes on the commission to decide what to do, whether to pass it on whatever they have to do depends on the commission at this moment. And they are going to meet again. They may have been, they couldn't come to a, a decision, so they are going to meet again to see the deliberate on the final figure. So before we go, does the arrival of the power ship make the need for new tariffs more present? The power ship, it, it, it is not the power ship that will um, uh, push for a new tariff or let there be an increase. The, the generation mix has changed because we are looking at 27% hydro, to the 70% hydro in the generation mix. And now we have the concentration on thermal, meaning that we are using other fuels which are more expensive than hydro. And that is one of the reasons why that we are pushing this side. Because if we cannot uh, depend on hydro as we used to. And that is the situation at the moment. All right. Thank you so much for your time, madam. I yes. was speaking to Madame Nanaya Jantwa on the new tariff regime. Moving on, cavities or a hole in the tooth affect 60 to 90 percent of school children and nearly 100 percent of adults. And to help reduce these high numbers, Unilever Ghana has launched the Pepsodent Triple Protection in Accra. Unilever Ghana's marketing director, Mr. Clarence Nati, said the new Pepsodent is part of Unilever's commitment to offer its customers more value for their money. Ghana. 96% of adults between the ages of 35 and 44 are affected by periodontal diseases while 40% of 12-year-olds have decayed, missing teeth, stained teeth and bad breath. This expert say has had a daunting effect on the health and confidence of the population. One key way that Unilever has tried to address these issues is by embarking on a brush twice daily program since 1996. The campaign has reached 7,000 school children since its inception. The latest move by Unilever to curb dental issues is the launch of the Pepsodent Triple Protection in Accra. At the launch, the past president of the Ghana Dental Association, Dr. Cloris Adadevo, said as families grow, living conditions change, making it very important to pay attention to dental care. She lauded the move by Unilever to promote oral health. The current president of the Ghana Dental Association, Mr. Asante Apia, said the fluoride calcium, perlite and fresh mint in the new Pepsodent gives consumers a holistic protection for their teeth. We have all heard about the components of the particular triple protection pepsodent that they are giving us today. We have the fluoride and the calcium in it. And we also have the mint. One of the functions of the mint is the antibacterial activity of the mint. The mint is also very good at reducing the amount of bacteria we have in our mouth. The marketing director of Unilever Ghana, Mr. Clarence Nati, spoke about the new addition to Pepsodent and how it compares to other Unilever brands. 
Within this product, uh, we have um, fluoride calcium, which helps strengthen the animal okay, against cavities. And then it contains perlite as well, which is, allows um, the teeth to then have um, that sort of uh, natural whiteness. And then the um, fresh mint as well is what it, it does two things. It actually is a, an antibacterial agent, but it also then helps to offer fresh breath. So you have the three benefits in one product. Pepsodent's triple action gives the family the needed extra level of protection from a toothpaste. Let's know how the CD's performance on the interbank market. The Commodity Board is up next. And that was business brought to you by Ecobank, Hisons and Airtel. Have a good evening. If you have just joined us, this is News R. In more news, the Director General of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, Major Albert Donchebe Retard, is the new president of the African Union of Broadcasting, AUB. Major Donchebe takes over the presidency from Mr. Tofik Khaledi, Director General of the Algerian Broadcasting Corporation, who occupied the position for four years. The election took place at the ninth annual general meeting of the AUB in Abuja, Nigeria, on the 27th of November, 2015. The AUB is the Continental Umbrella Association for all broadcasting companies in Africa. It has a membership of 48 national broadcasting entities and 15 private broadcasting companies, which are associate members. We spoke to him earlier in this interview. One of the three key objectives that have been assigned to me, yeah. let me say, during the tenure okay. of my presidency, mm -hmm. is to put in place a concept okay. which is really uh, already in existence mm. in various parts of the world. That is a, an exchange network. Uh, in fact, the, the, the network is called Multimedia Network mm. over Satellite. Mm. And uh, the short form is what we call MINOS. Mm -hmm. Now, this MINOS already exists in all other continents of okay. the world. Mm. It's in South America, it's in North America, it's in Europe, in Asia. In fact, even the northern part of Africa, our northern African mm. brothers have allied with their other Arab uh, colleagues and have set up this exchange network centered in all GS. Mm. The only part of the world which is not yet part of this international network is sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. And uh, my task is to ensure that this network comes into being. Mm. And that will satisfy the huge thirst and hunger for content. Because mm -hmm. what it does is that it allows us in Ghana, for mm -hmm. example, to pick up the over 400 TV channels, content from over 400 TV mm. channels in Nigeria, for example. Okay and many other channels across east, uh, west, mm -hmm. uh, what's south, south, uh, mm -hmm. southern or central Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa has not been able to do it for various reasons, mm -hmm. largely, uh, you know, mm -hmm. cash. <laughs> and uh, we are hoping that mm -hmm. uh, with the support of the African Union okay. and with the support of the African Development mm -hmm. Bank, in the next 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. we should be able to put in place this network, mm -hmm. which would answer many of the content questions mm -hmm. in Africa. Yeah, and over here, we call him the Don. Now he's the Don of broadcasting <laughs> in Africa. And we say a big congratulations to our Director General Major Albert Donchebe Retired. We'll take a break here. We'll be back with some uh, health news. Stay with us. 
Hey, welcome back in Health News Tonight. Vice President Kwesi Misa Arthur is advocating for voluntary blood donation instead of replacement donation. He believes that could save more lives. Mr. Misa Arthur made the appeal at the 2015 National Blood Donor Day launch in Accra. Nuto Bibini Nuto reports. From the World Health Organization shows that over 290,000 women across the world die as a result of pregnancy-related complications and bleeding. Another 26% of deaths in sub-Saharan Africa are due to lack of blood. In Ghana, the National Blood Service was instituted to solicit blood from especially voluntary blood donors to save lives. Those who have done this over the years were acknowledged for saving precious lives. Mr. DeGraft Baden tops the list for donating 123 times. Groups and churches who have also mobilized donors were also rewarded. But the sector minister Alex Segbefia feels there is still some shortfall, requesting of people to donate three times in a year. I wish to appeal to the general public to come on board. Let us join efforts to increase voluntary blood donations to ensure the timely availability of blood and blood products for patients. In that vein, I personally pledge as Minister of Health to donate blood at least once before the end of this year. To the Vice President, Mr. Mr. Arthur, voluntary blood donation is a generous humanitarian gesture worthy of emulation. Most of us wait until our relatives are in hospital and they need blood before we show up to donate. But we have to move away from this system that replaces the blood that patients require and achieve a 100% voluntary donation by the year 2020. That's the target date that has been set for all countries by the World Health Organization. I therefore want to use this occasion to appeal to all Ghanaians to make voluntary blood donation a civic responsibility. The National Blood Service welcomes donors anytime, any day. Ntobi Bini Nto, GBC 24, Accra. Next, we have the sports news. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome. Time for us to bring you updates from happenings in the world of sports. I'm Theophilus Sampa. This is in partnership with Tobin Queen Pharmaceuticals Limited, producers of Lunat. Let's move to the Garden City in Kumasi, where the Porcupine Warriors yesterday put smiles back on the faces of their supporters when they pipped their regional rivals of Boise Ashgood by a goal to nil to lift this year's SIC Nyamite Swag Cup. The victory ended the Abuakesi boys' dominance over the Osakrum boys in recent times, and then the Kumasi lads, the bragging right for the moment, playing before a big crowd which included the Asante Heno Tunfo said to the second, who is also the life patron of Kotoko. The homesters needed a late goal from a free kick converted by Eric Donko to win the day. To Accra, Master Kelvin Korte is the winner of the 2015 Olympics Taekwondo Children Open Championship. He will represent Ghana at the 2016 Children's Taekwondo Culture Festival in South Korea. More than 700 Taekwondo practitioners between the ages of 5 and 13 took part in this year's Children's Sparring Championship. The event at the Sports Hall of the Accra Sports Stadium was put together by an Olympics Taekwondo Academy practitioners gave their all and hope to catch the eye of the selection team. At the end, participants were presented with some tokens. Master Kelvin Cote was declared the overall winner. The president of the Olympic Academy, Master Nobet Amefu, a former national Taekwondo star, tells us more. We are so happy, everyone is happy over here. And then I'm hoping that next year will be more better than this. Master Kelvin Corte will represent Ghana at the international level. He is expected to improve on the performance of last year's winner, Joseph Kuyon, who won silver at this year's World Children's Saquando Culture Festival in South Korea. Pinables ended with rugby. Dansuman Hurricanes Rugby Club continued their good run in the ongoing Ghana Rugby Championship. They beat experienced side Idas by 7 points to 3.
The Ghana Rugby Championship entered match day two at the Accra Sports Stadium. It started with a clash between Accra Sharks and UCC Spartans. Sharks in the green jersey were forced to be at their best as they battled before breaking through the steel defense of the UCC Spartans. After 18 minutes of back-to-back -back action, Sharks won by 17 points to 15. Another closely fought contest was the meeting between Idas and Dasuman Hurricanes. Idas in the white and green jersey paraded some of their expatriates, whilst Dansuman Hurricanes also used their national team players. The highly entertaining encounter had the Dansuman lads in the white and black jersey making a try and conversion. The battle ended three points to seven in favor of Dansuman Hurricanes. The tournament coordinator, Mr. Steve Noy, was satisfied with the level of competitiveness. We saw the first match and it was a very tough match. We thought the second game was going to but it was even tougher. I think the impression that I have and everybody here is that it's been a highly improved uh, tournament. Here are results of other matches played. Sharks 17, UCC Spartans 15, Hurricanes 7, Islas 3, Cosmos, Buffaloes 28, Griffins 0. The league continues at the Accra Sports Stadium. So that's all for sports. Hello and welcome to the entertainment segment of the news. My name is Micheline Taka. Classical music is ok is categorized in two main forms choral and orchestral in ghana choral art music is gradually gaining popularity ada quay on the black and white keys is a classical music show organized annually to treat the audience to harmonious choral tunes this year's edition came off at osu presbyterian church in accra The Methodist Junior Choir and Mr. Adakwe started the show with melodious choral hymns. There was a performance of the song, It Is Well. There was also a rendition of an Anglo-Irish carol. The audience also had the opportunity to join in a chorus. The choir ended it all with To God Be The Glory. Speaking with GBC24, Mr. Adakwe explained what inspired the organization of the program. Classical music in itself is really going down in the country and uh, if we don't have such programs or if we don't organize such programs uh, you know, in, in no time uh, the kind of music we want to hear will go down. Some members of the Methodist Junior Choir also expressed their feelings about the program. It's, it's exciting. It was hectic but fun. Perfect submission, perfect that's all on entertainment today. And this is where we draw the curtains here on News Hour on GBC 24. And I will see you again at 10.30 when we bring you news tonight.